Ashley Strauss. I'm an STPPS kindergarten teacher. I'm so glad you could join me. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the main idea. Remember that the main idea is what the story is mostly about. So I have a really good story for us to read today. It's called Arthur's Pet Business, and it's by Mark Brown. Your job while I'm reading the story is to be thinking about what this story is mostly about and some key details that helped you understand what the main idea was. You've been looking at puppies for months, said DW. When are you going to ask Mom and Dad if you can have one? I'm waiting for just the right moment, said Arthur, so promise not to say anything. That night at dinner, Father asked, What's new? Arthur wants a puppy, said D.W. Blabbermouth, said Arthur. A puppy is a big responsibility, said Father. I can take care of it, said Arthur. Well, we'll think about it, Mother said. That means no, said D.W. After dinner, mother and father did the dishes. Can you hear what they're saying, asked Arthur. They're worried about the new carpet, whispered D.W., and suddenly the door opened. We've decided you may have a puppy if you can take care of it, said father. Wow, said Arthur. But, but, said mother, first you need to show us that you're responsible. How will I ever prove I'm responsible, asked Arthur. The best way I know is to get a job, said D.W. Then you can pay back the $7 you owe me. Ka-ching, went her cash register. Arthur wondered what kind of job he could do. You could work for my dad at the bank, said Muffy. He needs some new tellers. If I were you, I'd get a job at Joe's Junkyard Crushing Old Cars, offered Binky Barnes. Do something you like, said Francine, and that gave Arthur an idea. I'll take care of other people's pets, said Arthur. Then Mom and Dad will know I can take care of my own. Arthur and Francine put up signs to advertise his new business, and his family helped too. Arthur waited and waited, and then just before bedtime, the phone rang. 
Hello, he said. Arthur's pet business. How can I help you? Yes. No. When? Where? Great, said Arthur. Hooray! I'm going to watch Mrs. Wood's dog while she's on vacation, and I'll earn ten dollars. Oh, no, said D.W. Not nasty little Perky. Isn't that the dog the mailman calls Jaws, asked Father. That's Perky, said D.W. The next morning, Arthur ran all the way to Mrs. Wood's house. Right on time, said Mrs. Wood. Grrr, growled Perky. She hasn't been herself lately, said Mrs. Wood. I'm worried. I'll take good care of her, said Arthur. We'll be best friends. Grrr, growled Perky. Here's her schedule and a list of things she doesn't like, said Mrs. Wood. And I'll see you next Sunday. Arthur did his best to make Perky feel at home. Every day he brushed her. He tried to fix her favorite foods. They took lots of long walks day and night. And Perky made sure they had the whole sidewalk to themselves. You look exhausted, said Mother. Maybe taking care of a dog is too much work. Any dog I get will be easier than Perky, said Arthur. Word of Arthur's pet business got around. On Monday, the McMillans asked Arthur to watch their canary, Sunny. On Tuesday, Prunella gave Arthur her ant farm. On Wednesday, the brain asked Arthur to take care of his frogs while he went on vacation. But best of all, on Thursday, the amazing Larry asked Arthur to keep Cuddles, his trained boa constrictor. Animals were everywhere until Mother put her foot down. I want all of these animals in the basement now, she ordered. Mm. By bedtime, all the pets were downstairs, all except Perky. Perky slept in Arthur's room. On Saturday, Buster asked Arthur to go to the movies. I can't, said Arthur. When I finish cleaning these cages, it will be feeding time. And anyway, it's Perky's last night with me, and she seems sick. I don't want to leave her. Well, I bet you're happy today, said D.W. the next morning. You get rid of Perky, and you collect ten dollars. I can't believe it, said Arthur but I'm going to miss Perky. Arthur, Mrs. Wood just called to say she's on her way over, said Mother. Now wait here, Perky, ordered Arthur, and I'll go get your leash. When Arthur went back into the kitchen, Perky was gone. Here, Perky, Perky, called Arthur, but Perky didn't come. She's not in the basement, called Father. She's not in the backyard, said D.W. She's lost, said Arthur. Oh, no, said D.W. You're in big trouble. Arthur, Mrs. Wood is here, called Mother. Hi, Mrs. Wood, said D.W. Guess what? Arthur lost Perky. My poor little darling is lost, asked Mrs. Woods. Don't worry, said Father. Arthur's looking for him right now. Suddenly, they heard a bark. Everybody come quick, called Arthur. Look, said Arthur, Perky had puppies. No wonder she's been acting so strange, said Mrs. Wood. You've done a wonderful job taking care of Perky when she needed a friend the most. How can I ever thank you? 
A reward might be nice, suggested D.W. Shh, said her mother. Here's the money I owe you, said Mrs. Wood. And how would you like to keep one of Perky's puppies as a special thank you? I'd love to, said Arthur, if I'm allowed. Of course, said Mother. You've earned it. Wow, said Arthur, ten dollars and my very own puppy. I can't believe it. Neither can I, said D.W. Now you can finally pay back my seven dollars. Ka-ching, went her cash register. So today, what I want you to be thinking about is our story and the main idea. Remember that the main idea is what the story is mostly about. So on a blank pe piece of paper at your house or if you have your writing journal, I want you to go ahead and either write or illustrate the main idea and three details that helped you to figure out the main idea. Remember, those details are supporting what the story is mostly about. Thank you for watching about the main idea today. You did a great job. Remember, you can be watching other videos like this one so we can all keep learning together. You can watch lessons daily on STPPS TV or on our website at stpsb.org. See you again soon. World famous explorer, Miss Sam here. And I have just uncovered the secret to finding the lost treasure of ultimate mystery. With this map to guide us and these keys, we will be able to find this lost treasure. Our keys, as you can see, have letters on them, a T and an H. Do you know what sound together those make? That's right. And I also have this key. It has an SH. Do you know what sound that makes? Yes. Shh. So with our TH and our SH keys, or we can also call them our digraph keys, we will be able to find our treasure. Are you ready? First, we must travel to the gate of wood. Then we must go to the cave of tools. Third, we must see the gate of white. Fourth, we must go to the tree of ultimate power. And five, the treasure. There it is! The gate of wood. Yes. It's locked. It's expected. Was this a keyhole? In a word. Help me sound it out, my friends. Ing. 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 Ing isn't a word. But I have my two keys, my digraph keys. Shh, S-H. Shh, ing. Shing, shing a word? No, that's not right. What sound did T-H make again? You're right. Ing, ing, thing, thing. This must be the key. Right. Let's see. All right, my friends. We go forth. We must find the cave of tools. Oh, goodness, my friends. Oh, we've got to almost be there. The cave of tools must be just up ahead. Look! Another keyhole. This must be the cave of tools. Let's see. We've got another word. Come see, my friends. Come see. Help me sound this out. Up. 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 Let's get our keys. Let's see. Last time, we needed the TH. The key. Let's see if it works again. Sop? No, you're right. That's definitely not a word. I've got one more key to try. Shh. Let's see. Shh. 
shop. 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 Shop is most certainly a word. Let's... All right, let's go. Wow, the Cave of Tools is quite dark. I wonder why they call it the Cave of Tools. Ow! That would be why. Just tripped over a hammer. All right, but we must feel our way through. Be brave, my friends, be brave! This Cave of Tools is disgusting. Light? Could it be the way out? Yes. Hmm. I wonder where the gate of white could be. Ah, a caterpillar. Let's ask him. Mr. Caterpillar, do you know where the white gate is? The gate of white? It's behind you. It certainly is. Come on, friends. Ah. Let's see, we've got another clue. Ark. Ark. Hmm. Which key? Ark. Ark? No, no, that's not it. Alright, SH again. What sound? Sh shark. What word? What word did sh Ark make? Shark, yes. Shark. Let's see. Bridge. Let's make sure it's sturdy. We should be able to cross it. The tree of ultimate power doesn't look too powerful. In fact, it looks pretty scrawny. I say, we just go around it. We don't need to solve the puzzle, we can just walk. Ready? What? Oh my goodness, my friend. There's a force field. We cannot get through. Looks like we'll have to solve it after all. Come see. All right, let's try to sound it out together. E, ink, ink, ink. Ink? Shink? No. Where's no. my other key? There it is. It's stuck. No, it's not. All right. Ink. Ink. What word? Think? Is that a real word? It certainly is. Think. I think you're right. Let's try it. Let's see. It worked! Yes, we must journey on. The final place is... <gasps> the treasure should be up ahead. Let's go see. Do you see that? We've done it! The lost treasure of ultimate mystery. One final keyhole. Sound it out with me, my friends. Eh, ul, el. Which one? El or sh, el? Shell? Sh, el. <gasps> Let's give it a try. <laughs> Goodness! What wonders! The thread! This thread is what the all ancient adventurers used to sew their clothes with. TH Diagraph, you're right! This little handmade sheep. Sheep. SH diagraph. Sheep. There's more. The shell. What diagraph is in shell? SH again. 
One more thing, my friends. It's itty bitty thimble. Thimble. Which diagram? TH. Thimble. I cannot believe we found this treasure. Thank you so much for exploring, my friends. I'll see you later. Joe, a kindergarten teacher with St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. And today we're going to learn how to use our observations, or what we see, to describe what plants and animals need to survive. We're actually going to learn how to use those observations to determine or decide if something is a living or non-living thing. So to start, let's review what living things need to survive. Living things need air to breathe. Living things also need water to drink. Living things need food or nutrients to eat. And living things need shelter or a place to live. And remember, shelter can look very different for different types of living things. Like I am a living thing and I live in a house, but a crocodile or an alligator lives in the water, and plants live in the ground in the soil. So shelter looks different for different kinds of living things. Today we're going to be talking about the characteristics of living things. Characteristics are what something has in common or what a group of things has in common that makes it what it is. So today we're going to talk about the things that living things have in common and the things that non-living things have in common. Well, first, you're probably wondering, first, what is a living thing? Well, let's look at the word living. Living, living, live. What do you think a living thing is? That's right. A living thing is something that is alive. So, if I'm looking over here at the word non-living things, non-living, non, what does non mean? Non means not. So, not living. That's right. Non-living things are not alive. Now, let's look at the characteristics of living things and non-living things so we can decide if an object is a living or non-living thing. First, let's look at living things. Living things eat, which is why they need food to survive. Living things can move on their own by themselves. They don't need any help. Living things can grow and change. Again, that's why they need food and water is to help them grow and change. And living things breathe, which is exactly, that's why they need air is to breathe. So if those are the things that living things all have in common, those are the characteristics of living things, let's look at the characteristics of non-living things or what non-living things have in common. Non-living things do not move on their own. They need a little bit of help if they're going to move. They do not eat or drink, so they don't need what? That's right, they don't need food or water to survive. And they do not breathe. So if they don't breathe, they don't need air. That's right, they don't breathe. Well, right now, I have some pictures here. And I'm going to sort these pictures and decide if they are living 
or non-living things on my chart here. Now, I want you to listen and watch as I think aloud as I sort my pictures. And I'm going to use my observations, or what I see and know, to sort the pictures. Okay? So, my first picture is a mushroom. A mushroom. Now, I know I can see that a mushroom is growing in the ground, and I remember that I've seen mushrooms outside. So if a mushroom starts little and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, it must be getting the food and nutrients from the soil. So just from those observations, I'm going to say that a mushroom is a living thing. Now my next one is a cloud, a cloud. Now, I know that I've seen a cloud move across the sky, but when I think about it, I don't think the cloud moves on its own. I think the cloud has to be pushed by something. Do you know what it has to be pushed by? It's right, it has to be pushed by the wind. The wind moves the clouds. And I know that clouds don't breathe and they don't eat, so a cloud must be a non-living object. So I'm going to put it over here on the side with non-living things. Next, an umbrella. I know that I hold an umbrella and I know that umbrellas um, don't eat, they don't breathe, they can't drink anything because they just push the water off of me. So an umbrella must be a non-living thing. So we have two non-living things and one living thing. Let's look at another one. A ladybug, a ladybug. Now, I know that bugs start out as an egg, then the larva hatches, and then it grows and it changes until it becomes the adult type of bug or insect. So, I know that in order to do that, that insects or bugs have to eat, they have to breathe, and they grow and they change. Also, insects move because I see insects crawling and flying. So insects, must, any insect must be a living thing. So I'm gonna put it on the living thing side. Next is a kite. A kite is an object that flies through the air. But I know that when a kite flies through the air, I have to be pulling the string and pull it through the wind and through the air in order for it to fly. So a kite doesn't move on its own. A kite doesn't eat, it doesn't breathe, it doesn't drink water, and it doesn't grow and change. It's just whatever I made it to be. So a kite would be a non-living thing. Let's look at the next one. Sunglasses, sunglasses. I know I wear sunglasses on my face when it's sunny outside and it's bright, but do sunglasses move on their own? No. Can sunglasses eat or breathe? No. Well, based on those observations, I'm going to say that sunglasses are non-living things. Okay, let's see. We have one, two, three, four non-living things and one, two living things. Let's see what we have next. A flower. A flower. I see flowers outside all of the time, and I know that flowers have roots that grow down into the ground, and those roots are how they soak up the water and the nutrients or food that helps them to live and grow and change. So by those observations that they grow and change, they need food and water, they need air, I'm going to say that a flower is a living thing. And I'm going to put it on the side by living things. This is my last picture. Are you ready? My last picture is a duck. A duck. Now I know that a duck is a kind of bird. I know that birds fly. I know that they hatch from eggs and then they grow until they become an adult animal or an adult bird. So. I also know that they need water to drink and food to grow and change. So by those observations, I'm going to put the duck on the side by the living things. Look there, I 
have one, two, three, four living things and one, two, three, four non-living things. Now that we've sorted these together, let's go out and see if we can find some more living and non-living things to sort. I'm going to go outside and help find some objects and we're going to do this together now. Are you ready? All right, I'll see you in a minute. We are outside in front of my house. Let's see if we can find some things that are living and non-living around in my yard. What do you see? You see a house? I see the house too. Now do you think a house is a living or a non-living thing? Let's think. Do houses eat? No, houses don't eat. Do houses breathe? No. Can a house move by itself? No, don't think so. So is a house a living or not living thing? That's right, a house is a non-living thing. Now let's look behind the house. What do you see big and tall behind the house? Yes, we see some trees. We see trees. Are trees living or non-living? A tree is a plant, so a tree needs sunlight, it needs air, they need water to get nutrients so that they can eat. So a tree is a? A living thing, that is correct. Let's see what else we can find. Do you see the lizard on the hose? Is the lizard a living thing or a non-living thing? Let's observe it for a second and see what it does. Oh, I see his head moving. So he moves on his own. What else? What do you think the lizard is looking for? Maybe some food or some water? Well, if he can move and he's breathing and he's looking for food and water, what would that make him, living or non-living? Yes, a lizard would be a living thing. Now what about the water hose? Is the water hose a living or a non-living thing? That's right, it's a non-living thing. A water hose can't move on its own. A water hose doesn't breathe. And a water hose does not need food or water to survive. Do you see that right there underneath the light on the wire? It's a bird. Let's listen. Can you hear the bird making noises? Do you see the bird moving? If the bird is moving and can fly on its own, it's making sounds so we know it's breathing. What do you think? Is it a living or non-living thing? Yes, a bird is a living thing. Hi, boys and girls. On my way back inside, I thought of something that I wanted to show you. But shh, we have to be real quiet because I've snuck into my son's room and I really want to show you this thing. Are you ready? My son has a red-eared slider turtle that he keeps in his room in an aquarium. And his name is Mikey. Mikey has food, and you can see him right now trying to move in my hand. You see him? He wanted to be on screen too. You see him moving? So what do you think Mikey is? That's right, using our observations, we learned that living things move and they grow and they change. And they eat and they drink water. So looking at those observations, Mikey would be a living thing. And you can see him moving. He's trying to get back into his aquarium. So I'm gonna put him back real quick and I have one more thing to show you. There you go, Mikey, back in your house, in your shelter. All right, the last thing I want to show you is this. This is in Mikey's aquarium. And you might think, oh, that's a live plant. But look, it's just a plastic plant that's just stuck in this little fake rock here. So 
since it doesn't have roots, it doesn't really need water to survive, this would be a non-living thing. And we know that because, like I said, it doesn't have roots sticking out the very bottom. It's got little fake ones at the top here, but it doesn't have any real roots. It doesn't really drink water. So since it doesn't drink water and it doesn't grow at all, that makes it a non-living thing. So sometimes things might try to trick you a little bit, and when they do, you have to really think about your observations so that you know whether it really is a living or a non-living thing. Okay, I'm back. Did you enjoy finding living and non-living things outside with me? I'm so happy you enjoyed that. Well, guess what? On my way back inside, I picked up just a few things to um, show you, and I wanted to talk to you about those now because your challenge for this week is to go around your house or outside in your yard and to find living and non-living things and to sort them on your own. That's your challenge. So just walking into the house, I found these few things. I found a stick. I picked some flowers and see it's got the roots and everything so I can plant it back so it doesn't die. And I found some rocks. Those are a few things just to help you get started with your challenge. I look forward to seeing how you sort your living and non-living objects. Make sure to send them to me so I can see. I will see you next time. Bye.
All right, let me set our timer here. Arm circles. Arm circles Stand with up. a side touch. So, you're going to step side to side while you're moving your arms in a circular motion. Now, if you don't like it Arm that backs. way, rest for 10 seconds. You can do them like this. Three, you're still doing two, arm circles. One, now you get rest. to rest. Oh, guess what? Exercise Up one is done. Plank jack. Now we push have plank jack. Three, push up. Two, like that. One. Here we go. Just plank 20 jack. seconds. Push up. Plank jack. Push up. Plank jack. Push up. Okay. Remember, if those push ups are too hard, you can drop to your knees for the push up. Up next. Ooh. Rest for ten seconds. We got the rest coming already. Three, two, one. Yay! Yes. All right, y'all are doing awesome. Hang in there with me. Broad Five jump. Back, step back, okay, so broad seconds. jump. Three, jump. two, one. Step back. Broad jump, back, All right, step. so let me do it this way here. Jump it out as far as you can. You can jog back. Jump it out as far as you can. Jog back. Or you can walk Up back. Next. Rest for 10 seconds. Oh, got that rest coming already. Three, That heart rate should two, be getting up though. One. There's that rest. rest. So, ooh, high kick. Up next. So you can high put your hands on your sides seconds. and do high kicks. Three, two, or put one. your hands out straight. High kicks. Now you can put a hop in it, or you can take it down a notch and just bring the legs up. Try not to bring your head down and your legs Rest up. for 10 seconds. Okay. Do it here if you have to. Three, too much. Two, Whatever one. works for you. Press. Woo! I need that rest Up already. Next. Okay, try to push up for 20 seconds. So, three, here, two, hands by one. your side. Trace the push ups. Okay. Your elbows are brushing up against your rib cage. As you see, I already started down on my knees. If that's too easy, come to your um, come to your toes. Excuse me. Up next. Here. Rest for 10 seconds. Uh, let's get one more in there. Three, two, one. Rest. Okay, rest. You rest, and then demonstrate. Circle, circle runs. For 20 seconds. Three. Circle two, runs. You one. can go both directions. Circle runs. So, go one way, and go the other way. You can go fast. You can go slow. You do whatever you okay. need to do. Rest for 10 seconds. I'm just seconds. glad you're here exercising with me today. Two. One. Woo! Rest. Okay, here's rest for you. Let me demonstrate next. the next forward, forward back and back speed. Back speed for 20 so, seconds. So, you jump Three, in forward and back. Two, one. Okay. Forward. Jump forward. Back speed. And back. Forward and back. Now. Woo! How are we feeling? We're working hard today. Up next. Rest for 10 seconds. I hope you like different timers on these re exercise Three, routines. Two. One. Change it up a little yes. bit. Woo! Triangle oh, push ups. Now, triangle push ups. You're going to be tough. You're going to put your Three, hands in a tri triangle position. One. Tuck that triangle under. Triangle push ups. Then you're going to woo, go down to the ground, chest to the ground. Now, if you're nice and strong, you can go to your toes and still do that triangle oh, push up. Nice. That is very seconds. hard. But it's okay. Three. Two, here and one, work your way up rest. to that. Okay, now we're gonna jog in up place. Next. Jog in place for 20 Ooh. seconds. I believe Three, we two, only have one. One jog more for us. Okay, this is jog in place. I hope you were resting because I was just showing you the jog in place. Okay, jog in place. Now if you need a little more, bring those knees up high. Up next. Let's get that heart rate up. Seconds. Now the second time Three. around. Round two, round circle. Okay, 
Side now we're going to do it through all over again. Two. One. Right Here we go. Circle. Okay. Side touch. Side touch arm circles. I'm going to do them like this. I like doing the big arm circles. So now I'm going to go a little bit faster. So I know what I'm doing Rest now. For 10 seconds. You got that breath coming. Three, two, Woo, one. Keep smiling. Rest. Rest. Yes. Okay, now if you don't need Play rest, you can move around. Push ups for 20 seconds. Okay. Three, you do what's best two, for you. One. Here we go. Jack. Push ups. Flying Jack. Push up. I'm going to spread my arms a little bit. Chest is round. Woo! Hang in there. Up next. Woo. Rest for 10 seconds. 10 seconds rest. Come in. Oh, two. I can't wait to rest. One. There it yes. is. Alright, we got those broad jumps. Run back. I like to move around for 20 seconds. So we got those broad jumps. Run one. back. Here we go. Broad jump, back step. Broad jump, back step. Broad jump, back step. Broad jump, back step. Broad jump. Back step. Broad jump. Woo! Rest for 10 seconds. Oh, that rest is coming. Three, two, one. And rest. Rest. Perfect. I hope you're hanging in there. Up next. This is awesome. Up for 20 so seconds. I can have you here with me. Three. I kicks. One. Here we go. Five kicks. Woo! Now, I got the high jump, high kicks, excuse me. Now, if you want to take this down, take the hop out of it. Up next. Rest for 20 minutes. seconds. Three. If you run two, a lot like I do. One. Those hands are a little tight into your hamstrings. Up next. Woo! Tracer push-ups. I like to get up seconds. front every other morning. Three. For three two, miles. One. Here comes those tricep push-ups. Okay. I'm going to go to my knees. And I'm going to tuck the arms in and have the elbows brushing up against my side, my rib cage. Up next. Rest for 10 seconds. Those elbows are shooting towards the back Three, wall. My butt is tucked under. One. Woo! I'm going to do one more. Yes. Okay. Up next. Circle runs. Circle Those runs are fun. 20 seconds. We are almost Three, done. Two. We got We one. got it. We Seven got this runs. together. We completed this workout. And I know it makes you feel good when you're done. I finished it. Oh, look. We're supposed to be moving. Circle runs. That's right. Up next. You tell Coach Chris all the seconds. Watch that timer. Three, two, one. Okay. Rest. Here we go. Woo, forward, back, ski. Up next. Forward. Like back, moving. ski for 20 like seconds. Keep that heart rate up. Two. And here one. it is. Forward, ski. Back, ski. Forward and back. These are some high energy workouts. But this really gets your body moving. And if you do them in the morning, Up next. you may find that you'll have seconds. more energy throughout the day. Three, two, I know one. I do. Press. Woo! I love to do these exercises. Try and I love to do them seconds. with you. Three, so, two, I hope you're enjoying one. them very much. Try and try push up. Push up. Here we go. I'm going to try a couple on my toes. I'm working on getting stronger. That's my goal. You should always set a goal for yourself. Rest for 10 seconds. Especially since we're all Three, focusing on ourselves two, right now. One. Woo! Press. Okay. We have that jog in place next. coming. Jog in place. And I think we only have one exercise left Three, right there. Okay? And then we're done. One. Woo! Here jog we go. In place. We did 10 minutes. You know what? I think by next week, I could probably do this next week. Same exercise routine. Two times in a row and make it 20 minutes. Oh, okay. yes. Rest for 10 seconds. Oh. Three, two. Woo. Oh, I'm one. resting for four times. Yes. Pay attention to her. Up next. She seems one to know the time better than our Okay. Three. Okay. Oh, two. Here they go. One. This is our last one exercise. Kicks. Woo! Yes. This is the end. Done. And remember, Woo. Now, right leg over left, 
Bend down and touch the ground. Workout video three. Stand up. Three. Opposite two, leg. Two, one. Steps over. Your time and is complete. Down. We are finished. Great job, kiddos. Stay tuned for the next exercise workout routine. Woo! Bye, kiddos. Ready for sun experiment number two. What you'll need is a paintbrush and a cup of water. Dip your pa paintbrush in the water and begin your painting. That was pretty easy, but what if I tried to do a bigger picture? Hmm, you know what? I'm gonna try to paint my dog, Lucy. Let's see how that goes. Oh no, it's starting to dry. See how the sun warms up the water? You try to paint and see if you can paint a whole picture before the sun dries. Let me know what you painted and post a picture in the comments below. See, it's pretty cute, but she's drying up.
Thank you.